If you didn't see our last two videos, then you may not know we had the chance to visit the adorable Hallmark town of Stamford, Kentucky. The trip was actually sponsored by Wilderness Road Hospitality, and the fun started right when we arrived. We dropped our bags at the Whitley Cottage and it was time for some shopping. The first stop, Morgan's on Main. So yeah, we've been in this location for three years in December. And um, yeah, we're just a little local small business. We get new stuff in all the time. Morgan's has some adorable boutique style clothes in a wide range of styles and sizes. We appreciated that there were options for us curvier gals because in smaller boutiques, that seems to be rare. We bought some cute sweaters and a whole lot of earrings. Probably 50% of my earring collection now is probably from Morgan's on Main. As we were walking to our next stop, Four Generations, we were stopped by a sweet man on the street. The cameras must have been a dead giveaway that we were out of towners. Joni B then spent the next five minutes talking to a local Stanford man from across the street. It really set the tone for the kind of town Stanford was gonna be. Hello everybody, we are in Stanford, Kentucky. We just talked to a man across the street, like literally across the street for like five minutes. So we are definitely in small town USA and this is a very cute little Hallmark town for sure. It is, okay, so on this trip we've had two now. So you people who are looking for Hallmark towns, we got you. Illinois and okay. Stanford, Kentucky, y'all. Stanford, Kentucky. So we got you. We got you. We got you covered. Now we're gonna go shop some more. Bye. Bye. The next stop was Four Generations, and they had a little bit of everything: notebooks, masks, scrunchies, and homemade ice cream. Can't beat that, can you? <laughs> this one. All right. This one is. Locally grown pumpkins. After hitting the shops, it was time for dinner at a local favorite, Bluebird. We have an entire video dedicated to this incredible restaurant, so you can learn more by watching that. Before our meal, we sat down with executive chef William Hawkins, aka Chef Bill, and had an incredible interview. It really gave us an inside look into the kind of town Stanford is and the kind of people that live in it. Shortly after my wife and I and children arrived. We were staying in a house that we now own, it was Jess's then, and um, Area's first schoolhouse, another little piece of history. I love old things too, mm -hmm. so these old wooden boards and these old brick walls, I love that they leave them. Mm -hmm. um, this would give you an idea of the town. So we, my wife was up there on the hill, it's right behind the soap store on top of the hill, and I was down here, and she called me and she's in a panic, and she says, I can't find Josh. Josh was our baby at the time. Gosh, he was probably three. Still in diapers, boy, you know, they're a little late sometimes. Um, but he was missing. She had just been doing some yard work. He's putzing around the yard. Well, most of my backyard over there is a vertical woods. Mm. So it's, she's scared. Mm -hmm. And probably mostly because not that drop, but where's my kid? Right. Mm -hmm. So she calls me. And I pick up the phone and I call Jess's assistant, whose name was Brock then. And I said, hey, I have got to go home. I just wanted you to know Josh is missing. I got to get up there and try to find him. And uh, I didn't know it, but he had hung up the phone and he had contacted everybody in the bank, called the people in the soap store. They had called people over there and these people just came out and started scouring the hills. And there's a couple businesses out there, and one of, uh, called Tillits, and then another one that sews. And one of the women had looked in the back seat of the car, and Josh had got down behind the seat and pulled a blanket over and was hiding from his mother. No, oh, no. And, um, but, you know, after it was all over, now, now think back, I'm Cincinnati, I'm Memphis, I'm Orlando, back to Cincinnati, to, you know, Indiana area to here. And I said, I told my wife, I said, what would we have done if somebody came running into Elvis's nightclub and said, I can't find my kid, we'd have been like, do you need a phone? What do you mm -hmm. need? And then when they went away, we'd have probably been like, oh geez, lady lost her kid. But that's not what they did here. Right in the middle of the day, businesses just shut down, went and found the kid. I was amazed. I was like. That story warmed our hearts. The fact that people would drop everything to help someone they barely knew that truly is the heart of Stanford. Everybody always speaks to everybody. Everybody always shakes everybody's hand. Now when I first got here being like Cincinnati and I'm like, 
I know they just saw each other two hours ago. Why are they so thrilled to see each other again and shaking hands, you know? But now I'm the same way. You go to, it's just part of the culture. You pull up to somebody and you're like, hey, Joni, hey, Jenny. The town gets pretty quiet after dinner time. Places are closed on Sundays and the local gas stations even pump your gas. Moving to a town like Stanford from the big city would definitely be an adjustment. When I first got to town, people would say, hey, where do you live? And I'd be like, why do they want to know where I live? Because they, <laughs> they know I'm at work, so what, are they going to go up to my house and rob my house? What are they, you know, that's the way you think in Cincinnati or Memphis. Mm -hmm. and, um, but no, they just want to know something about you. Mm -hmm. They want to know where you live. And uh, the plumber that helped me build over there, his name was Mike Sutherland. And he called me one Sunday afternoon. He had my number because we had been doing this build together and he was handling some of the plumbing, not all of it. And he says, hey, Bill, you guys lived in Memphis, right? And I said, yeah, we lived in Memphis. That's where my wife's from. He said, oh, she like barbecue? And I said, yeah, she loves it. He goes, good, I'll put some in your fridge. <laughs> <laughs> and just let himself in one day and then called me afterwards and he had put some eggs in there for me and we I saw I said you know heck we don't even lock the door nobody's taking anything they're bringing us stuff days two and three were jam-packed with historical sites spa treatments and some more shopping but you'll have to wait until Friday to see all that here's a teeny weeny sneak peek so we don't buy this and put a label on it. We melt it, we pour it into the mold. This is probably our most labor intensive product mm -hmm. because we, you know, you've got to pour it, scrape, pour it, scrape, mm -hmm. take it out, put the lid on, put the label on, put the stretch film on, then, you know. I call myself a little bit of a country architect. Uh, and uh, so, but Mayberry, they, they didn't have, uh, the Andy Griffin show didn't have an architect in there. <laughs> little staff but but we have one here thank you to wilderness road hospitality for sponsoring this trip if you want to see more videos like this subscribe it doesn't cost you nothing to hit that button y'all